Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angel. Today we are going to be doing some fun DIY home decor. I picked up this silverware box from the thrift store and I just thought it was really pretty. It had a lot of details around the edges of this box and I thought I could use it to store some of my candles and also use it for a riser. As you could see just now, I had already ripped out the inside. It was this really worn and old and dingy velvet fabric. But I did keep the inside to use for a template later. But before I start working on the inside, I actually want to work on the box itself. And I decided to try this easy off little hack to get the stain off of the box. I'm using the fume free kind. I don't really care for strong fumes. So this was best. It kind of smells citrusy, but I still did this outside and I just sprayed this entire box box with a really good coat of this oven cleaner and then I'm going to let this sit out in the sun for about 30 to 45 minutes. And you really just want to wait until the oven cleaner is completely dry on whatever you're working with and then I'm just taking a bowl of soapy water and a scrub brush and I'm going to scrub this really good and as you can see a lot of that orangey stain is coming off of here as I'm doing this. This is quite messy, so I do recommend laying something down underneath it. I'm just using some trash bags under mine. And again, just going over this a couple times, scrubbing it as good as I could. And then I just used a rag to wipe off a lot of the excess once I got this really nice and clean. If it's nice and warm out, you can spray this with your hose pipe if you wanted to, to make it easier for you. But I just kept cleaning mine and changing out my water until I got all of that oven cleaner off off of there and then I rinsed off the soapy water with just a clean bowl of water. And I know the box still looks a little orange but that is just because it is wet once I left this sitting in the sun for about 30 minutes, this is what it ended up looking like. Now you're going to want to let this completely dry in the sun. And when I brought it back in, there was still a little bit of parts on here. You can see these darker areas that had a little bit of stain on it. I could have gone back in and just did a second coat if I wanted to, to get the rest of that off. But I honestly kind of liked it having a little bit of that stain left over. It gave it a really worn, natural look. Now, as I was doing this process, the bottom of this box was actually just a piece of cardboard. And since it got wet, it kind of just fell apart and I ended up having to replace the bottom. I just used a piece of MDF sheet that I had already on hand to replace that. And now to work on the inside of the box, I'm going to be using this fabric I had. I actually got this curtain from the thrift store and I ended up making some cafe curtains for my kitchen and had a lot of material left over. So I used the previous inside of the box as a template, as I mentioned before, and I started cutting down the pieces to fit into the box. I'm starting with the side pieces that will go on the inside of the box and I just cut down a piece of fabric that I could fold over and there would be a little bit of excess at the bottom and then I hot glued it and folded it over so that the top would be a nice clean edge. Once I had all my side pieces made then I'm going to start hot gluing these to the sides of the inside of the box and I'm just making sure that that this top part reaches right at the top of the box. And you can see that little bit of excess I left at the bottom of this. And that's so the insert that I place in the bottom will cover that. So I just worked my way around the box doing the sides first and then the front and the back piece. And once all my side pieces were in, then I can start working on the insert for the bottom of this. And again, using the old piece of the bottom as a template. I'm actually going to replace this with some Dollar Tree cutting board. 
boards instead of using cardboard, which was what the original inserts were made of. Just because I had these on hand and they were already a good length, I just had to cut down the sides a little bit to fit. And I ended up making two of these, one for the bottom of the box and then one for the top. Then I'm just going to lay my inserts on top of that fabric that I'm going to be using and I marked it just a little bigger than the insert that I made so that I can wrap this around that piece of cutting board. Then I'm just going to pull that excess over the back side of the cutting board and hot glue it down to that back side. And to tuck those little corners in, I just made sure that when I hot glued it, it was kind of tucked at an angle so you wouldn't see see those edges. Then I just placed this insert down into the bottom of the box and I finished off the top part by doing the same exact steps of the side pieces first and then the large insert. And to finish this box off, I just wanted to add a vintage handle to the front of it. This is one I just got off of Amazon and I just had to measure where the holes needed to go. And then I attached this with some screws. And because the oven cleaner hack worked so well on my box, I decided to try it on this darker stained little book rack that I found at the thrift store. So I repeated the process of using the oven cleaner. This time I just used an old dish pan that I had since this was a smaller piece and just sprayed it really good with that oven cleaner and let it set until it was dry. Now because this was a darker stained wood, I wasn't sure how good this was going to work on here, but I did want to test it and once I rinsed it off and scrubbed it. As you can see, it didn't work quite as well and there was still a lot of that dark stain left on here. So I did end up having to repeat the process a second time on the darker stain. But once I did it the second time and let it set in the sun, this is what it ended up looking like. Again, you can see there's still just a little bit of the dark stain in a lot of the crevices. And I could have kept going and completely got all of this off of here. But again, I kind of liked the look of it. Now for this book rack, I did want to add some details to it. So I decided to use this pretty floral stamp that I had because I really love the look of a black stamp or black accent on raw wood. And and since I'm using a larger stamp, I just wanted to make this easier on myself. So I did end up taking this apart to do the stamping. And I didn't have a clear acrylic block big enough for this stamp actually. So I just went with it and did the best I could. I put the stamp on the block in the center and then just use my fingers around the edges to get the ink on there and then to press it down onto the wood piece. And once I had the large piece done, then I also wanted to use this stamp on the little side pieces, but just using the top portion of this stamp. And again, taking this apart just made this process so much easier. And then all I had to do was just put this book rack back together. Now that spring and allergy season is upon us, I thought it would be fitting to make a tissue box holder. And this one is actually inspired by one that I saw at an antique market. I didn't grab a picture of it, but it was really pretty and unique 
So I am starting out by using some of these chipboard pieces that I got from Amazon. You can just use cardboard or old cereal boxes to do this as well. Here I'm just measuring out the piece that I'm going to cut down and my measurements that I used for this were for the square tissue boxes, but you could make a long one if you wanted to. But because the one I saw at the antique market was for a square tissue box, I just went with that design. And all I did to get the measurements was measure the tissue box that I'll be using and I added half an inch to each side of this except for going vertical I made this eight and a half inches tall. Now I also ended up making a bottom for my tissue cover. You don't have to do that obviously you can just use it to cover your tissue box but I wanted a bottom for mine to make it easier to move around and you'll see you're actually able to put the tissue box in from the top of this so having a bottom is perfectly fine for this design so once I had my bottom piece and all four of my side pieces for this box then I'm just going to use that bottom piece and put it at the top, trace over the tip of this, and kind of cut this down to look like a house shape. Then I just used the first side that I did and used that as a template to do the other three sides. Then I stacked all four pieces together and just cut that tip off because the inspiration one that I saw had a flat top. So the pieces still look like a house, but just with a flat roof. To cover my tissue box, I'm again using that same fabric that I had left over from the curtains I made. And the one I saw at the antique market was actually covered in a fabric that was embroidered. So this worked out perfectly because this curtain actually has embroidered flowers on it. I'm just gonna lay my cardboard template down over the fabric and and I'm going to draw around my template, leaving a little bit of excess on each side. And for each piece of the cardboard templates, you're going to need a front side and a back side. So in total, you will need eight pieces of this fabric. And that's because we're going to end up kind of sandwiching this cardboard piece in between those two pieces of fabric. So to make this easier on myself, I just used the first piece of fabric that I cut down and used that as a template to make the seven other pieces. Then I'm going to take two of those pieces and do the design facing inward and hot glue all the way around this, just leaving the bottom section open. And once I have all four of my sides done, then I'm going to flip these the right way out and just kind of use my fingers to push out all of those corners. Then I'm going to take my cardboard pieces, use a ruler, and bend over the top section of the cardboard. And I'm going to repeat this on the other three pieces. Then I'm going to push my cardboard pieces all the way inside of the pockets that I made. And then I'm just going to bend over that top piece again to get a nice little bend in it. Then I'm going to hot glue all of the bottoms to seal in the cardboard pieces. Then I'm going to lay my pieces flat and whichever way the bend at the top is going inward, I'm going to take that excess at the bottom and hot glue it upward to make a clean edge around the bottom. So this will go on the inside of the box. Then I'm going to take two pieces with that bend facing inward and I'm going to line these up along the side and hot glue one side of this all the way up to just that bend. So the top portion above the bend will be left open. I let that glue dry completely and then I'm going to take a little bit of white string with a large sewing needle and tie a bunch of knots there at the end of it to make this nice and secure. And I'm starting on the inside of the box, pulling that string all the way through and then I'm just going to do a blanket stitch all the way up this side again stopping up at the top 
where the bend is. And since this is already hot glued together, I am leaving a little bit of space in between my stitches because this is more so for a decorative touch. Now, once I get to the top where that bend is, then I'm going to go back on the inside of this box, push my needle through the inside of the fabric and tie a couple knots to finish this off. Then I'm going to repeat the process on the third side again, lining this up with one of the pieces. With that flap folded inward, I'm going to hot glue just one side of this third piece to one of the other pieces. Then again, I'm going to repeat the same steps as before, starting on the inside with my string and then doing the blanket stitch all the way up the side until I get to the bend. Now doing the fourth piece was a little bit trickier, so I ended up just folding this in half and it made it a lot easier to do that final side. And once all my sides were done, then I was able to open my box and to add in my little bottom piece, I just decided to use a scrap piece of that fabric and I glued it to one side of the inside of the box and then to the inside of the other one just to make kind of like a little hammock for that bottom piece of cardboard. I see these little chandelier glass shades in the thrift store all the time. They are so abundant in there and I just wanted to come up with an idea to use these. So I thought they would make really pretty tea light holders. So I just grabbed one from the thrift store and you can get really creative with a base for these. But for this one, I'm just using this little round wood plaque that I got from Dollar Tree. You can also get these at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Since the shade has the little knobby piece on the top of it to go down into a chandelier, I needed to make a hole in the center of my wood plaque. I ended up just using a spade bit to make the hole big enough so that this would fit down in there. I was kind of torn on what to do with this bottom wood plaque. I could have stained it dark with some antiquing wax or painted it. Like I said, you can get really creative with the base for these. You can stain them, paint them. You can even use different kinds of bases for these. But I ended up deciding I I wanted to try to do a weathered raw wood look, kind of like the box and the book rack that I did. I really wanted this to look similar to those, so I just tried to mix up a paint color that looked very similar to those raw wood pieces, and I wet my wood piece and my paintbrush and went over the entire plaque and then wiped it off with a wet rag. It was definitely starting to look like the raw wood pieces that I've done. But again, I wanted to add a little bit of age and kind of deepen down that color a little bit. So I'm using some black acrylic paint on a fluffy thick brush and just dabbing off most of that paint. There is barely any paint on this brush and then I'm just dry brushing that black paint over this entire thing. And I'm mostly just doing like a crisscross motion on here to get it down into all the little wood grains and any of the beveled pieces. Then I'm gonna take my wet paintbrush that had the brown tan color on it and I'm gonna dab just a little bit of that color onto the brush, tap it off onto a napkin so that I can dry brush this color over top of the black so that it's not so stark and then I'm gonna go over over it again with that wet rag. Then I set this aside and let it completely dry before moving on to finish this up. And for that, all I had to do was use a little bit of gel super glue around the rim of the little knob on this glass shade, and then I just slipped it down into the hole. And that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed these projects. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.